So research from Gallup, Forbes, and Inc. state that between 38% and more than 50% of new leaders fail within the first 18 months. And 63% of millennials feel there is a lack of leadership development and only 5% of businesses have implemented leadership development at all levels. So the six characteristics I'm going to share with you, yeah, we're based on over 50 interviews of association CEOs and, and entrepreneurs that service our industry. And what we discovered is that the CEOs and leaders of these organizations have common leadership traits. And a driver that led us to write these books is when we convened a think tank of over a dozen association CEOs five years ago to discuss the future of associations against the backdrop of the fourth industrial revolution that has been happening for some time. And about four years ago, we dubbed the phrase Association 4.0 to reflect the necessary organizational and personal transformation that need to happen to remain relevant and to thrive. So let's get started. So hopefully we have a little bit more foresight than this driver, because if you're focused on the hood ornament rather than where you want to go, things could get a little messy. So our number one characteristic is the foresight to change before change becomes inevitable. So a lot of leaders have foresight, and I want to share with you just a few stories from our interviews. So when we talked to Steve Lieber, who is a recent CEO of the Health Care Information Management System Society, he told us he has been an agent of change since he arrived at HIMSS. And one of the first things he did was change the limiting terminology that caused people to work in old models and old ways of thinking. And that term was changing member to audience. Certainly in the digital age, building an audience is much easier to, than it used to be. But it all starts looking beyond the member to all audiences the association can serve. During Steve's tenure, he completed 10 acquisitions of other organizations. And Steve has embraced change since day one and often said to new staff, don't be surprised if things happen one way today and another way six months from now. And certainly merging 10 organizations under one umbrella brings lots of change. Another change agent is the CEO of the Society of Automobile Engineers, the SAE. And David Shutt made changes both internally and externally. He divested and outsourced activities that were outside his organization's core competencies, which meant removing senior staff from SAE. He also reframed the roles of volunteers to create a more meaningful and effective experience. So SAE now uses volunteers for market perspective and support instead of managing staff activity. David also worked with his board to move away from what he called the 1950s representative model to a small nimble team of leaders selected to serve based on expertise rather than where they're located. And so there are plenty of other examples of leaders embracing change. So what can we learn from these leaders on having foresight to change before change becomes inevitable? So first, learn to collaborate, understand your organization's unique value, Focus volunteers where they add value most. And remember, there is a world beyond your members. And run your organization as a business. And so here are a few topics for discussion at your organization. So if you were to increase your sphere of influence, how might you go about getting attention of those new audiences? And what could you learn from them? Is your association keeping pace with the industry represents? And what would the impact be of having to downsize in your organization? So instead of be like Mike, well, let's be like George. So number two, boundless curiosity. So most of us are probably very good problem solvers. But before we run out and solve a problem, we first must be able 
to identify these problems. And a unique characteristic that leaders we interviewed have is the ability to be a problem finder. So one of the CEOs that stood out for me that highlights having curiosity in her DNA is the recent CEO of the National Restaurant Association, Don Sweeney. So Don did an amazing job at NRA, including growing revenue from 50 million in 2007 when she started to over 116 million in 2016. And she told us the path to growth is empathy and her affinity for people is key for her success. She was meeting with members, she was listening to them, and she was looking for their and helping them with their pain points. And the knowledge she gathered from talking to her constituents resulted in the ability to develop products, drive customer engagement and loyalty. And her curiosity didn't stop at work. She also volunteers in philanthropy work with organizations like Save the Children. And with her, on work, with her work going there, uh, she says that some of her greatest leadership lessons come from helping others unravel some complex problems. So a true problem finder. So what are some of the things we can learn from Don and some other CEOs? Uh, you have to have you have to be empathetic to grow, uh, stick up for yourself and advocate for your team and lead the way for the next generation. Engage in philanthropy outside of work to fully explore and expand your curiosity and actively solicit ideas for improvement. So we have a couple of polls uh, throughout this webinar we'd like uh, you to participate in. So our first poll is, do you know why your association exists. So we'll launch that poll and um, give everyone a few seconds here to respond. So great, thanks for taking that and certainly uh, the results don't really surprise me. Obviously, you all know why your association exists, but here are some other questions for you to consider. And that is, how could you bring greater empathy to your role as a leader? Are you leveraging all of your association's creative resources? And is there a form for introducing new ideas and problem finding? And are you asking the right questions? Certainly we started off with the poll of why does your association exist? Um, but there are, might be other questions you need to be asking. So next, so for organizations to grow and prosper, a leader must seek and develop talent at every level of the organization. And so that's our third characteristic. So when we talked to the CEO at the Human Resource Managers Association of Chicago, Bernadette Patton said something to me that really stuck with me, and that was organizations are realizing that people are the only asset that does not depreciate. And the differentiator now isn't only the fastest piece of equipment or the most innovative technology, but it's having the best talent. So CEOs that are seeking the best talent options are doing a few things. Uh, they're removing barriers such as location requirements or requiring full-time employment status. They're using freelancers, part-time and remote workforce, that's BC that before COVID-19. They're also creating on-demand project work in blended cross-functional teams because most of these CEOs also recognize that this collaborative model of work is the way millennials prefer to work. Peggy Witten, she's the CEO of the Association for Intelligent Information Management said, my personal goal is to make opportunities for the future leaders at AIM. And she went on to say that success is shared and nobody feels like they have the entire profit and loss resting solely on their shoulders. Peggy is also moving her organization for the typical tall and heavy hierarchy to a more collaborative structure because she feels in this structure, 
she can better seek out talent and develop her current talent. So some key takeaways, identify opportunities for staff development and leadership. Consider a more fluid organizational structure because course functional teams play to employee skills and interest. Recruit the best talent, obviously, and remember that people are your organization's differentiator and most valued asset. And consider a contingent workforce. People want flexibility and companies want specialists. And more companies are parceling projects and hiring specialists and chaining the projects together instead of having full-time positions with a broad range of responsibilities. And some of you may be experimenting or experiencing this now. So what can you discuss in your organization? How is learning shared across your organization? Do you or your team take advantage of mentoring opportunities? And what behavior occurs in your organization that advance productivity or success? And conversely, what behaviors slow down or impede success? As we talk to quickly realize that their success would be dependent on changing either internal organization structure, the board dynamics, or both. So placing organizational success over individual agenda is our fourth one here. And we heard from a lot of CEOs that individual agendas start, live, and die with the board. We have talked to several CEO, CEOs whose first priority when joining the association was aligning the board and staff. And we have all heard or even experienced firsthand similar situations where individual agendas, dissenters, and pet projects were the drivers at the board. So CEOs at organizations such as the ASCM or formerly known as APIX, the Consumer Technology Association, HIMS, Human Resource Managers Association of Chicago, the Metal Treating Institute, the National Association of Healthcare Qualities, SAE, and more, all of those CEOs had to reset their boards and establish great relationships with their volunteer leaders. And certainly, none of it was done overnight, and some of it took a couple years. So what advice from these CEOs that transferred the, their boards. So first of all, to the CEOs out there, run your boards right. Set clear roles and expectations from the outset. Establishing trust certainly takes time, but providing the right framework to lead staff and deliver on strategic objectives will ensure a positive volunteer staff relationship. And boards, empower your staff leaders Enable that chief executive to lead by allowing full power to make all operating decisions. Focus on only two or three large goals and use everyone's support in executing them. Don't try to accomplish 50 different goals that can create the land grab for resources and prioritization. Cultivate champions on the board, identify several board members who have a broad perspective and find opportunities for them to connect and influence their colleagues. You know, does your association's board structure enhance or impede effective governance? And are you able to have candid discussions with your board about the need for change or other challenging topics, which I'm sure today there's a lot of? Are your board members selected based on skills, experience, geography, or some combination? And what are the advantages of moving toward a more competency-based leadership? So just moving on here. So as Buzz says, there are new ideas everywhere. And we've all heard great ideas at conferences. For example, when that speaker says, you need to create the culture of innovation. And we all shake our heads in agreement. And then it's back to business as usual. So number five is courage to adapt to new ideas. So we have talked to several CEOs for taking these new ideas and actually adapting them 
implementing them and nurturing them. We heard from CEOs who have completely virtual organizations. Again, that's BC before COVID-19. And CEOs who use smart sourcing, which is where their talent pool is a mix of full-time staff, freelancers, and part-time resources. And other CEOs who have completed a culture transformation. So Nancy McRae, the CEO of the Emergency Nurses Association, she has created a culture of collaboration with her staff and board. And she just isn't saying it. They all live their values and culture every day. And they do a great job of talking about their goals and bringing everyone together. And each individual owns a piece of their success. And about two years ago, they moved into a fabulous new facility that's a visual representation of their culture and values. And I had an opportunity to work and tour their building and they have open collaborative spaces as well as private ones. They have a staff cafe. They have these really cool private work pods that look like the first class cabin in, uh, at United. Uh, they have a treadmill. They have a patio with an open fire pit. And they even have a ping pong table. And during the safer at home mandate, the staff team have also adjusted really well to the work at home. And again, I know this firsthand because I still had the privilege to be working with them and they still continue to live their values and operate in this culture of collaboration. So what takeaways we have here, you know, be transparent, use data and dialogue to drive decision-making and ensure that those new initiatives you're planning are based on facts and not politics or other subjective drivers. Think like a startup, evolve as your industry evolves, or better yet, set an example and be agile, innovative, and forward thinking, and don't wait to respond to change. You be the disruption. Or innovation programs that recognize, reward, and encourage innovation. And when you do have those ideas, float them early and see if they take hold and actively solicit ideas for improvement. You know, create a forum for staff to present uh, recommendations. So as you consider adapting or implementing these new ideas, here's a couple other questions for you guys to consider. So are you using your members' innovative capabilities to create these new products and services and ideas? Uh, do you think your organization makes the most of your team's strengths? And do you have enough self-starters and innovators on your teams? And then, you know, how do you identify people with these qualities? So certainly communication is very important during these uncertain times. And our six characteristics our leaders had in common is communicating vision throughout the organization. And they do this by their action and participation. So number six is communicating vision throughout organization. But first, you have to have vision. And all of our CEOs and leaders we talk to do have vision. And having a powerful vision gives you guidance through your journey and helps you get through all those different twists and turns. And it's the vision that gives you courage to keep your eye on the ball and enthusiasm to take others along with you on your journey. And we asked our industry entrepreneurs to describe the association CEO of the future. And almost all of them said vision and communicating that vision. And so here are some of their responses. The CEO of the future will need the vision to discover innovative areas for growth and the courage to insist upon change. A risk taking culture is a must. The associations that are successful going forward must be committed to creating their own vision of the future. And that means taking risks, taking control, and making decisions. And the one CEO that stood out for me that has incredible vision is David Martin. He's the CEO of the Society of Critical Care Medicine. And David puts his staff and organization through routine training drills. That's right, routine training drills and scenarios outlining how SCCM will respond to disasters 
or workplace emergencies. And these drills certainly have paid off because when Hurricane Katrina forced SCCM to move their annual meeting out of New Orleans in 2006, they were able to do that successfully. And during the 2009 H1N1 pandemic, the staff was fully prepared to work remotely. And more recently, the organization has been successfully able to deploy critical care and ICU professionals to Haiti and most recently to New York City. And it's not just emergency preparedness that S, uh, the SCCM focuses on. They also stay ahead in regards to the strategic use, strategic use of technology. So SCCM has done a lot and actually probably too much to mention here given our very short time together. But I did want to highlight one thing and that's back in 2007, SCCM went paperless and became 100% digital, implemented business intelligence and dashboards so their staff can monitor the health and the growth of the organization. And they've also had a work from home policy. And they've had all of this for the last 13 years. So certainly it takes vision and communication to get those things done. So some key takeaways, you know, break down your association vision into smaller manageable pieces. And vision is pointless without the courage of your conviction and confidence to win that support and understand your organization's unique value and be a learning organization. We can all learn from each other. Some questions for you to consider as you're working through your vision. Um, so who needs to be the visionary at your organization and why? And are you striking the right balance between big picture thinkers and doers? Is your organization's vision compelling enough to move hearts and minds? And do all your stakeholders understand your vision and understand your why? So to summarize, our transformational leaders, they foresee change and make it happen. They're very curious. They seek and develop talent at all levels. They're extremely focused on organization success. They adapt and implement new ideas. And they certainly have vision and communicate that through the organization.